Finally, we can commence with the reassembly. Well, there are a few things I do have to tie up before that, I promise we will get to the reassembly or at least a vast portion of it in this episode. All these things to get through and more, so let's go. Oh, you guys thought I was done painting? Well, I did too. This is the last of it. At least I hope so and think so, but these are just some bolts I needed to have black because I don't want a ton of shiny things except for this one giant shiny thing. So I've had this idea in my head since pretty early on in the build and I had no idea how it was going to look or turn out. So this might look terrible. I'm not sure. I'm just going with it and I have a vision in my mind and and I was hoping that it would turn out at least somewhat okay and we'll see. This battery is kind of the centerpiece of the entire build considering I pretty much built the rest of the frame or at least modified it around being able to fit this gigantic battery pack. Honestly I'm kind of tired of attempting to explain why I've been on such a gold kick and having these reflective elements in my build but if you watch my model kit build I go way more into depth in into why I'm into gold so much right now. But the gist of it is how do you make something that's already a centerpiece even more extravagant and eye-catching is wrap it in some gold foil tape. I'm also into the contrasting elements of the matte camo finish against the gold reflective shininess. I just think that looks really cool. Although I do admit it's very easy to overdo it and have it look very cheesy and gaudy and that might actually be what your perspective is on it and that is valid and I will take it but for me I just wanted to make this more subtle even though it looks just like a giant gold brick trust me it's just gonna be some minimal parts that you're going to see later so just bear with me on this one I was really happy with how this came out it looked as good if not better than how I envisioned it in my head so seeing this gigantic gold battery just made me very happy Okay, way back in the first episode, I went over one of the things I really didn't like about this frame, and that is how the swing arm attaches to the frame. And it was actually kind of dangerous because there was so much slop and play going on. I did make it so much better by adding these bearings instead of the rubber bushings, but there was still a little bit of play, or at least I thought so. But it wasn't until later I realized it wasn't actually the bolt and the bearings that had much to do with the slop and play. I even bought this bigger bolt to help mitigate some of that but this bolt actually doesn't fit in those bearings so I finally realized what actually was causing so much of this play and that is the swing arm holes themselves. It's still way tighter than it was before and definitely rideable it's not dangerous anymore but to me this is just way too much slop if I'm going to try and make it better I might as well do it as best I can. That's another reason why I wanted to use this newer larger bolt because it fits through these holes with much tighter tolerances although as you can see here it is still not up to par there is still a little bit of play even though it is super minimal this bolt doesn't fit my bearings so I'm going to have to use the other bolt but I figured if I add some material here I might be able to make the tolerances very tight I seriously considered not doing this modification because I really didn't want to be messing around with the paint I just painted all these parts and I was really happy with how they came out. But I thought I already dumped so much time and energy into this project, I might as well just do that last one or two percent. So here I am welding onto my freshly painted frame. There are a ton of ways I could have tackled this problem, but I had never had a welder before. So I just figured I might as well utilize some of my new skills and put them to solving a problem that would otherwise take me a lot more to figure out. I'm putting these tacks on the top part of the opening because I figured that most of the weight is always going to be resting on the bottom so the stresses on these tacks are not going to be as much as if they were on the bottom. These actually went on way more smoothly than I thought. I thought the paint was going to be peeling all around. I thought it was going to be a total mess with a bunch of smoke going everywhere but it was actually pretty easy to do and I was really happy about that. The bolt doesn't even actually turn in these holes. They all ride on the bearings which 
each turn so this part isn't going to be feeling any kind of wear or anything like that it's just to take up some space and i actually made the tacks way bigger than i needed to i actually had to take away quite a bit of material in the end there was only about one to one and a half millimeters worth of material that was left and that's all i needed to take up the space and now this bolt fits very tightly there is zero slop and zero play and this should be a nice little modification speaking of modifications i recently purchased this rivnut tool and i have never used a riveter or anything like this so i had to read the instructions and i still think i did it wrong so you can adjust the throw and i must have made the throw too long or too short because it was actually damaging the threads inside and i don't think it's supposed to do that the first one was the worst the rest of them i got a little bit better i kept adjusting it and playing with it until i could finally just have it go smoothly and it wasn't messing up the thread at all. You're probably wondering what are these holes for and I will tell you that later on when we're almost done with this project. Speaking of holes, here is a gigantic hole where most of the wiring is going to go through. Even though the edges are pretty smooth and it probably wouldn't be a problem, I'm not taking any chances with a short circuit, especially with this much power going through the bike. This is just some weather stripping plastic molded C-channel stuff that is very protective and it is strong and it makes this edge extremely smooth. I also have a little bit of gold tape left and I thought it'd be a cool idea to kind of decorate the interior panels of this gold at least the parts that you're gonna see because the battery takes up most of the area so I just need to do this front part a little bit. I don't even know how much of this we're going to be able to see but I figured if we can it might look pretty good. You know, as these episodes kept going on and on and more and more of them, I never thought I was going to be able to finally get to this point where I could actually start putting things back together. And I am super excited and happy about that. Thank the e-bike gods that I was able to get that gray paint from the local hardware store because that can that I had shipped to me still isn't here and I would have been waiting and held up because of that. When I first reassembled this bike for the test ride a couple episodes back, I did it all by myself and it was a little bit tricky. Because I didn't want to scratch up all my nice paint, thankfully my dad was there to help me out with this, but having this stool also helped a lot because it took a lot of the weight off of everything. With my swing arm mods, this thing is super solid now and on to the battery. This battery is no joke and I wanted to drop it down from the top even though before I was laying the bike on the side and that was a lot easier, but I didn't want to risk tearing up all of my freshly laid down gold tape so here it was and that actually was pretty hard but we got it in there and now it's all in its rightful spot. If there are two bolts on this bike that I absolutely do not want to have come off, every other bolt I'd probably be okay with at least to some degree but these axle bolts in the back, yeah if those come off while I'm riding that would be disastrous. I'm always a bit paranoid after reassembling that maybe I missed a bolt or something so I try my best to check and recheck just to make sure. Another thought I had that kept me up at night because I had never tested the pedals with the side panels on and I was really scared that yeah this was not going to fit but thankfully this barely fits and barely. Of course there are workarounds to this problem if there was one but this is not a time in the build where I want to be thinking about workarounds. Now this is the part of the build where I was a bit hesitant to get into and I was kind of dreading maybe a little bit. Not these LED strips, these are fine, I've already had them in the past iteration of this bike, but more of the controller side of things. I'm not used to mounting my controllers outside of the bike. And although I do have a controller cover, I'm not quite sure how much it's going to cover all these wires and I did want them to look as good as I possibly could make them. I'm definitely going to have to make another pass with some zip ties and possibly some tape to clean this all up even more but it's actually looking pretty tidy after figuring out I could put a lot of these wires up into the frame. So we'll see how it ends up eventually. The only thing I really didn't like was this giant hall sensor connector. It's ugly and there's really nowhere else to put it so hopefully maybe I can hide it a little bit better. We'll see later on. 
This whole area here is still to be determined and the other things I had to determine was my whole dashboard setup. I had previously used this on my last iteration of this bike although it is a little bit different now and I had to pretty much re-figure out how I wired up this connector. I really only used seven pins even though I had an eight pin connector so I was kind of baffling myself of why I didn't utilize that last pin but I finally figured out what everything goes to and what I need to modify. The other thing I needed to modify was the connector for the charger because I have a special one that goes on the bike so I need the matching one on the charger. The other thing I have to tackle is the front headlight which is part of the wiring so I gotta square that away now. The handlebar setup is pretty much how I had it in the past iteration and something seemed a little off here and I wasn't quite sure. Of course I could go back and just look at how I did it last time but I figured I might as well just either make it better or different this time so that's what I'm doing here. I think before I had the light mounted kind of underneath this part but I think it actually looks better with it above so I'm gonna try it that way but it took me a while to kind of figure out how I wanted things. I took this thing off and on like a bunch of times and eventually I got it to where I wanted it to sit. Now that I got the headlight all mounted up, I needed to figure out the rest of the wiring here for the entire dashboard and it took me pretty much like half a day to just slowly chip away at getting everything all sorted out and making sure everything was working correctly. I did end up using that eighth pin, but I just doubled the positive lead so I could have more kind of wire mass to carry the current and just alleviate some of that on some of these thinner wires. I do have a tail light. I also want to integrate with the headlight. So when you flip those on, they both come on, but I'm not sure if that's gonna fit with my seat design. We'll have to check that out later, but I'm hoping it does because it would add a little bit more lighting and it would look really cool. Okay, after a ton of wiring, I finally got it to work after multiple iterations of thinking I had it, checking it, needing to switch a few wires, but I finally got it. As you can see, my 12 volt rail switch is working, my light switch is working, my RGB switches are working, also the rotaries are controlling the RGBs, and also my pilot lights are working. A lot of the time I spent on this wiring was just me figuring out how I initially wired it up. I think it would have been a lot faster had I just started over and rewired it from the beginning. There were a few things that I was like, why did I even wire it this way? It would have been so much simpler to do it this other way. And I guess that just goes to show that I've learned quite a bit in the past three or four years since I originally made this bike. But the bottom line is that it all works, all the dash components work, and I'm very happy about that to be moving on to the next phase of the build, which is, uh, I guess, more wiring. But we'll have to tackle all the rest of the wiring in the next episode. We are getting dangerously close to the end of this build and I can't tell you and express how excited and happy I am about that because this has been a long time coming. Even just to see it in this state right here, which is not even completed, I think this thing is turning out to look so incredibly cool. And don't get ahead of yourself, I know the gold is a bit much at this point, but don't worry, there are going to be more of those side panels. You're only going to see little hints and accents of the gold, so 
it's not going to look like this. It's going to be much more subdued. But I actually do really like the way it looks. A part of me is thinking maybe I should even do clear side panels, but I think that might be a bit much. So let's try the dark smoke tint first. And then if I want to change it later, I guess I can. And yes, I do have some more wiring to go. But at this point, it's pretty much all there. I just need to solder some more wires together. But I don't know if I'll be able to finish by the end of the next episode. But I think within two, we should be able to complete this. What do you guys think so far? Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious. And I want to thank you guys, like always, for watching all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching guys, we're getting very close to the end so stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.